Hey, this is Josh, and in this video, we're going to go back and fix the server project that we talked about in our previous video, which you can see it fine above. And big thanks to Nicola for pointing out in the comments below that the project actually does not work where it is right now and providing the solution to actually solve this problem. So in this video, we're going to go over that solution, and I'm going to also go back and take the chance to talk more about some of the Haskell syntax that we encounter inside our Plutus application. So without any delay, let's get started. We're back to the starter Plutus application. So the important part is, is remember, our Plutus application takes in two endpoints, which is defined inside our schema. The first is our publish endpoint, where we put ADA up to be locked in the blockchain. And then we have a redeem endpoint that is used for someone else to redeem that specific amount of ADA. So publish takes in a tuple of two parameters, integer and value. Integer represents the secret password we use to lock ADA, which is our value. And then, of course, in redeem, we have integer, which represents our guess to redeem the ADA that has been locked up. If we were to go to simulate and we were to run this application, the mess up is that for some reason, this simulation only works for the value 20. Uh, we suspect it might be because it's hard coded in the application. However, if we were to use anything else, for example, if we were to use 25 instead of 20, and we run the simulator, we see that, if you scroll down, that our wallet one, which started with 100 ADA, is now 80, while wallet two still doesn't work. But that's expected because we didn't implement the validator script that we talked about in our previous video. Now, if we were to go down and look at the logs, we see something interesting. For our first action that we did for wallet one, we sent a publish request with the integer 1245, and for some reason, it has the value 20, even though we set 25. And of course, in wallet two, our redeem endpoint fails because we didn't implement our validator script. In this video, we're going to quickly fix that. So let's go back to the code. So right now, whenever we get our input from our endpoint, which you can see right here, we get a tuple I in lock funds. For some reason, whenever we try to retrieve that data, we don't get anything. So instead, what we can do, and what is done in some of these other Plutus applications, is we can define a custom data type to store our values in our endpoint, in our simulator, and then use to retrieve it. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create our published params, which will be the, the data that we use to represent the user's input for the publish endpoint. Here's our new data type published params. And specifically, this is something in Haskell called a record. We have the published param class, and this class has two parameter types. The first one we call a password, which is an integer, and the second one is an amount, which is a custom value and represents a lovelace or our ADA basically. So we're creating a class that takes in these two values in as its in its constructor. And then we have deriving stock and deriving any class. Stock is a way for us to tell Haskell to implement a standard functionality of these functions. So we have equals, show, and generic. And this is just something I pulled from these other projects that we'll talk about in future videos. Any class is very similar to stock, but instead of asking Haskell to provide a standard implementation of these functions, these are functionalities that we import ourselves. What's interesting for our public brand is that we have this from JSON and to JSON and to schema. This is all so that we can serialize our data that we input from the simulator all the way to the actual code that runs it. And this way we can convert our data to a JSON and then we can read it from a JSON. And this is some implementation that is defined somewhere else for us to use. Now we have our published params. Let's create our redeem params. All right, so we have a redeem param. It's very similar to what we did for published params. We create a class redeem param that has a constructor that takes in one parameter, which is an integer that we call guess. So now that we have a custom data type for our params, let's re replace them in the actual code. So right here in our schema definition, for publish, instead of using a tuple, we'll use our publish params. And then for our redeem, we use our redeem param. 
Now that that gets translated, we just need to use the value inside our contract code. So that is in publish and redeem. So in publish, all we need to do is we go change our initial type and we just say publish params i and then lock funds. I did some more learning after the previous video and I'm going to take the opportunity to kind of talk more in detail about what's happening inside this specific function. Our publish function and our redeem function, they're both something we call IO actions. IO actions in Haskell is a way for Haskell to receive inputs from the user. You can tell a function is using a IO action by looking for the do keyword. So I don't know what endpoint publish is, but whatever this function does, it actually returns a data type IO which is basically a wrapper around the parameters that you get from the simulator. And this little arrow is exactly how we get the data type. We're just saying we extract the IO value from our endpoint and we convert it to something we can use. And what's going on over here is we have our data type published params and we're doing something called in Haskell called pattern matching, where we, we know that we get a class back called published params. And this class, as you recall, has two parameters, password and mount. We use them inside our code, i and lock funds. And then at this point forward, the code worked exactly the same as we did last time. We create a constraint where we pass in our custom datum that we use our i value. And then we specify the lock funds that we want to lock. And then once we have our transaction, send the transaction to the blockchain ledger. Of course, this dollar sign means execute this as a function and then give this result back to void. Void itself is a function that just returns an empty tuple, which is what we expect inside our return type for this function. Now that we finish our publish function, we need to do the exact same thing for our redeem function. So we go over here, we do the exact same thing. We do a pattern matching and we just say, we get our redeem param back from our endpoint and redeem param has one value in its constructor. And then we do the exact same thing we did with our redeemer value. We create our transactions and then we send it to collect our data. And that's it. If we were to compile the code and try again, we're going to run into an error saying that we are missing a prelude import. Yep, right here, no module name prelude is imported. So all we need to do is go back up and just type import qualified and prelude. Qualified just means anytime we want to use a function that we're importing from prelude, we also have to include the prelude type. So for example, right here. Now we compile again, the code will work. There we go, compilation successful. So before we continue on and test the code, there's one more change that we need to go back and make we need to go back and define our Boolean of our validator script. Specifically, is the transactions that we made a valid transaction or not? And so I'll just quickly re-implement this. We're going to do pattern matching to get our MyDatum structure, which takes in one parameter, which is an int. And then we'll do something very similar with the Redeemer type. And now that we have access to both of the integers from the datum and the redeemer, we just check the equal or not. And if they are, we release the funds. If they're not, then we fail the transaction. So that's all we need to do. We hit compile one more time to get our changes. Operation successful. And then let's go back to simulate. So in our simulator, we will just publish. We, we define our publish endpoint. Everything looks the same. So we put our password and let's say one, two, three, and let's say we're locking up three, eight uh, love laces. We need to wait for our transaction to complete. And then let's say wallet two, we want to redeem that data. So we guess the right password, one, two, three, and then we also need to wait again and we evaluate. All right. So now if we go back and look, we see that while one has locked up the three ADA like we wanted, and then wallet two has redeemed the three ADA that we wanted it to do. So awesome, everything looks great. And if we look back into the log, we see that wallet one has the password one, two, three, and it has the value, the amount three. 
And likewise, for wallet 2, when we try to redeem, we have our, our guess, which is 1, 2, 3. And that's it. All right, to wrap everything up, in this video, we went through the start project again, this time making some quick fixes to get our application working by defining our own data type for our endpoints. Now, at this point in the video series, you should actually have enough knowledge now to go look at some of the other projects like Starter, Vesting, and Crowdfund, and maybe even have a rough idea of what's happening in the code. But don't worry, if you're still struggling to understand or you want someone to explain it to you, we are more than happy to oblige. That being said, in the meantime, if you found this video helpful, please consider hitting the like button and then maybe even hitting the subscribe button to get notified when we do send those other videos. In the meantime, have a great day and I'll catch you in the next video.